Hey guys, in this video today, I'm going to give you five highly profitable business ideas that you can get started right now that bring in big money. And which one is best for you kind of depends on your specific situation. So I'm going to tell you which ones are best for people in a particular situation. So the first criteria I'm going to use is whether it's more time intensive, that is, you have to put in a lot of time to make it work, or it's more capital intensive. In other words, you have to pay money up front in order to make it work. So, you know, if you have a lot of time, but not a lot of money, then you're going to want to lean towards the time intensive business. But if you have a lot of money, but not a lot of time, then you might want the more capital intensive business. And actually, just out of curiosity, let me know in the comments, which one would you prefer? Do you prefer more time intensive or more capital intensive? That's helpful for me to know for future videos. Now, the second criteria is whether or not you have to be on location or you can be remote. In other words, do you have to be there physically present in the business in order to run the business? Or can you just do it from a laptop, from a phone and do it from anywhere in the world? And then the last criteria is income potential. How much money can you actually make from the business? So I'm going to go through all five of these business ideas and evaluate them based on those criteria. So I recommend that you listen to all five before you go and make a choice on which one is best for you so that you have all the options on the table. So here are the five businesses. And as usual, I will save my favorite one for the last. Number one is affiliate marketing using organic social media. The way this works is that you post on social media in a way that you leverage the algorithm to get more and more views and more and more followers. Now, you don't necessarily have to use your own content. There's a lot of people that are really good at, at just repurposing other people's content. So for example, what you could do is you could take clips from long YouTube videos or long podcasts and find like the most impactful clips and then put them as shorter YouTube videos or put them as Instagram reels or put them on TikTok, give them a provocative title, and then people will click on those, will watch the video. And if it's something interesting, which it probably is if you're using content creators that are interesting, then people will watch, people will subscribe, and keep, people will keep coming back to your content. Now, that's how you get people in. And by the way, if you'd like to use my YouTube videos for that, you're more than welcome. And then you want to monetize that traffic. In other words, you want to find a way to make money from the people's attention that you are getting. So the way that you do that is you find an affiliate offer, which is basically just someone else's product that you can sell online through a link that is related to the subject of the content. Now, you want to keep your content all on the same subject, right? So for example, let's say that the subject is fitness or weight loss or something. Well, you could have a whole bunch of videos from fit not fitness or weight loss influencers on your TikTok channel, let's say. And then you have an affiliate link in your description that invites people to sign up for the certain supplement or certain fitness program or something that's going to be relevant to that particular content material and that's going to be attractive to the people that are watching it. And what happens is that whenever anybody clicks on your affiliate link and they buy the product through you, then you get paid a commission. You get paid, and it depends on the product, what the commission is, but you can get 40, 50, I've seen as much as 75% commission that goes directly to you. And you don't have to do any kind of fulfillment at all. You just drive people to the page and you get paid. That's it. This is a very nice business idea if you don't have a lot of money to start because there is zero startup costs. You don't have to pay basically anything in startup capital. It is time intensive, however. It is gonna take you a bunch of time and it's a lot of posting, a lot of video editing and that kind of stuff. And it is fully remote. You can do it from anywhere. You can do it sitting in your backyard like I am right now. And the income potential is low six figures, right? You're not gonna get super rich doing this, but you can make a pretty healthy amount of money. And if you decide to have your own product sometime in the future, you will already have that ready audience that's built up and you can make a whole lot of money at that point, which I'm going to get into a little bit later in this video. So that's the first business idea. If you're interested in learning more about that, I got a video all about it right here. You're more than welcome to check out. Second idea is direct response marketing to an MLM offer. MLM stands for multi-level marketing, also called network marketing. Um, also called a pyramid scheme in some cases. Now, a lot of people don't like this at all. And a lot of people just shut off whenever you say that. So like, give me just a second, hear me out, because I know that MLMs suck and they suck for two reasons. Number one, because 
The basic way that people do MLMs is they just harass their friends and their family members to try to join their stupid business opportunity that never works for them. And like, you know, it's impossible to get other people to, to be interested in it if they haven't made any money from it themselves. And so, you know, you, everybody just kind of ends up hating you if you try to do that. The first time somebody tried to get me into an MLM, it was some kid that I went to high school with that I literally never talked to. And somebody like called me and said, hey, your friend Jeff says that you would be a good fit for this for this business opportunity. I'm like, how does he know I'd be a good fit? He's li literally never talked to me in his entire life. But so, you know, it's it's stupid the way that people promote it. And the second reason that people hate MLMs is because they say that they're promoting some kind of product, but actually they don't care about the product at all. It's about just getting other people involved in selling, right? It's just purely a pyramid scheme. So what I'm talking about here is not that, right? I, that drives me nuts. I don't like it either. What I'm talking about is a new way of doing MLM that solves both of those problems that still keeps the great stuff about MLM, namely that you get, once you got some people under you, you're just making money without you really having to do anything. And you get, you get uh, paid for like multi levels of people under you, thus the name multi-level marketing, but you don't have to harass people. And it is actually product focused instead of just is like pushing business opportunity on everybody. And the way it works basically is to use regular direct response marketing in conjunction with the MLM. And so what you're doing basically is you're pushing people to a landing page that says, hey, would you like to learn more about um, some benefit of the particular type of product? So the one that I'm aware of, what they do is they have alternative products to products that people have to buy anyway, like household products, shampoo and dish soap and, and like cleaning stuff, the stuff that everybody has to buy, they sell, but theirs are non-toxic and made in America, which is actually a pretty big selling proposition because normally people buy that kind of stuff from Walmart or for the, from the grocery store and they come from these huge corporations that are that are made by like slave labor in China and they're poisonous and they like poison your kids and your dogs and it, like it's it's just terrible and most people kind of recognize this but they don't really see an alternative and so what we can do is we can have a landing page which is just a simple page saying hey are you sick of supporting slave labor in China and poisoning your dog <laughs> well then sign like sign up to get more information about how you can replace this with made in America safe products that you can be, feel good about using. And then people will sign up and then you can contact them and tell them about how to buy the products. And this works really, really well and it makes a lot of money and you're not having to go and like harass people and make everybody hate you. And then the way that you actually get people to your landing page is, well, that's all the old fashioned ways, right? You can run advertising, you can pass out business cards, one way that I think is really cool is just make a bunch of flyers and go put them on all the cars in the Walmart parking lot or the Target parking lot, because a lot of those people are buying from Walmart or buying from Target, but they don't feel good about it. They know that they're not buying quality products. They know that they're supporting slave labor in China and they would rather not be, but they just don't know how to do it. And so you put that on somebody's car and they're like, oh, well, that sounds pretty cool. And how much did you pay for the flyers? Like 20 cents a copy, 10 cents a copy, something like that. It costs next to nothing. So anyway, whether this is time intensive or capital intensive kind of depends on how you do it, right? Like the Walmart flyers example is more time intensive. Or, you know, if you want to run ads, you can do that too. That's a little bit more capital intensive. There is going to be some cost to this, although it's probably very low cost, right? Because you have to sign up for the, the program to begin with, which usually costs a little bit. And then, you know, if you want to print flyers, that's going to cost a little bit. So if you have absolutely zero money to your name and you're living under a bridge, then probably this isn't the one for you. But if you have a little bit of money and you want a pretty unique opportunity that very few people are doing, then this is a good one. And whether or not it's remote, again, depends on how you do it, right? You know, if you're if you're traveling, as long as you're near a Walmart, you can do the Walmart flyers idea. Or, you know, if it's not a Walmart, then whatever other store. This probably works best in the USA. I don't think it would work in other countries, like if you want to live in Thailand or something. Um, unless you're running advertisements to it, that you could do from anywhere. So it could be remote or semi-remote, depending on the way that you go about it. And income potential is mid to high six figures. So if you're interested in that, 
then I can refer you to the program I'm working with. I'll put a link in the description um, just to you know, get some information. Though I imagine the same thing would work with different MLM programs and they all have different rules and I'm not sure if they would allow that. But the one that I work with, I know for sure allows that. So click the link if you're interested. Now, the third business idea is Airbnb arbitrage. This is one that I think is kind of cool. Um, it's not really very time intensive. It's possibly remote, but it would be kind of easier to do if you're in person. I recommend you do it in person, at least in, at first, until you get the hang of it. There's some startup cost, probably a few thousand dollars, but not much. I mean, it's not like you have to go and buy a property. And income potential is mid six figures. So let me tell you how about how that works. It's pretty simple. Really, what you do is well, we'll give you some background. To rent a house or an apartment or a room or whatever on Airbnb, um, usually you make quite a lot more money than if you're just renting long term. So let's say that somebody wants to rent a house long term for $2,000 a month. Well, chances are, if you put it on Airbnb and do short term, you can actually make six to $8,000 a month. The problem is that there's a lot more management involved with the short term than with the long term. Because if it's long term, then you just get the tenants to sign a one year lease and then you don't really have to do anything, you know, unless something breaks, you have to fix the thing that breaks. Whereas with the short term, you have people that are coming in and out all the time and it's like a whole lot of management. You got to, you know, worry about approving them or disapproving them and then telling them what's the Wi-Fi password, ask, <laughs> answering all their questions and giving them the key and, and all that kind of stuff. And so what happens is that a lot of people um, would rather do the long term just because it's less management, like it's less time, but they realize that they're leaving a whole bunch of money on the table. Or maybe they don't even realize they're leaving a whole bunch of money on the table. So what you can do is you can go to the people that are renting long term, the, the actual landlords, the homeowners, and say, hey, instead of renting long term, why don't you put your place on air or let me rather list your place on Airbnb. I'll take care of all the management. I'll take care of letting people in and out. I'll do all of the heavy lifting and give you and share the profits with you. So let's say that the house is, you know, they're trying to rent it for $2,000. Well, you can say, let me handle it on Airbnb. I'll pay you $3,000 a month and then you keep the rest. Right. So let's say that you're making six thousand dollars a month on Airbnb and then you're paying them three thousand. Will you get to keep that additional three thousand as profit, as your payment for managing the property for them? And the great thing about this is that it doesn't really take a whole lot of your time. I mean, there's some stuff you got to do. You got to let people in and out. You got to approve people, et cetera. But it's only a few hours a week per house. And you can just keep doing the same thing over and over again. You can ap approach a bunch of landlords and have a bunch of properties. And you could manage probably 10 properties all by yourself. And now you're making $3,000 a month times 10. Now you're making $30,000 a month. So it's a pretty good gig. And then eventually down the road, you could find a system where you don't have to be there, right? You could you know, find people to work for you that could fix problems with the unit. You could find people that'll, you know, pass off the key or you could use a lockbox or something. I recommend that you do it yourself at first until you're comfortable with delegating that to somebody else, which is why I say this is sort of remote, sort of not. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, it's a it's a pretty good gig. If you're willing to spend a little bit on startup costs, like maybe you have to give a deposit to the homeowners. Um, and you're, you're willing to be there at the beginning. Now, if you wanna learn more about that, I have a video all about that. You can check out right here. But that's business opportunity number three. Business opportunity number four is starting a marketing agency. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't really like this one that much, especially if you're just starting out. I just wanted to include this one because everybody's saying it, like everybody's saying you should start a marketing agency. And the reason they say it is because you can just learn one skill rather than having to learn the whole suite of marketing skills in order to get clients for your own business, right? So they say, okay, you could just learn how to run Facebook ads, or you could just learn copywriting and you sell that skill to businesses. Now, that sounds great and all, but what they're, they're not telling you is that in order to get clients for that one skill, you have to have the whole suite of marketing knowledge, right? So let's say that you wanna do copywriting. Well. Okay, that's great. You just learned copywriting, but now you want to get clients. Well, how do you get clients? Well, 
Now you have to do your copywriting for your, for your own marketing, plus you have to run ads, plus you have to take sales calls, plus you have to build your web pages, etc. So it's not really as easy as people say that it is. Now, that said, it is still a very viable business. It's just you have to learn a lot in order to get it started correctly. But once you do get it started, then it's, it's a very valuable skill set that you can make a lot of money doing. Because businesses are always going to want more customers, and if you can be the person that brings them in more customers, that is very valuable. Now, it's also very saturated, right? You have a lot of people that you're competing with, so if you want to be successful, you got to find some way to stand out from the crowd and get people's interest when they have you know, people bombarding them every single day with text messages and emails trying to do marketing for them. But if you can figure that out, then it can be very, very profitable. So in terms of our criteria, it's kind of balanced, I think, between capital intensive and time intensive. So you are going to have to actually create these marketing campaigns uh, for customers. So it is a little bit time intensive. However, once you create a successful marketing campaign, you can kind of just let it run for a while. And generally, it'll just keep working and keep working and keep working. And there's not a whole lot that you have to do to mod to. Um, modify it. So in that case, in that sense, it's not that time intensive because it is at first, but then after a while, you can just kind of get recurring revenue without having to do much of anything else. It is something that you can do fully remote in most cases. So that's cool. Um, and then as far as capital, like it's, it's somewhat capital intensive because you're going to have to run ads probably in order to get clients for yourself. So you're going to have to probably spend a few thousand bucks on ads. Plus, all your softwares and stuff is going to cost you a little extra as well. So, you know, if you have no money at all, and this probably isn't the way to go for you. And then in terms of income potential, this you can definitely get to seven figures, right? There's a big income potential at this. Um, you do run out of time eventually, but these are most of these tasks are things that you can hire people to do for you. So if you build it big enough, uh, you could get to seven figures a year. That's business idea number four. Business idea number five, my personal favorite, is to sell online courses. Now, you might have noticed it's not only my favorite, it's pretty much everybody's favorite, which is why you see all of these like make money online gurus that are telling you how to make money with marketing agencies or with real estate or with Airbnb arbitrage or cryptocurrency or like whatever. They're all saying, hey, you can make money this way, but if you look at what they themselves are doing, they are all selling courses. Why? Well, because it's the best online business model there is, right? You create an online course. You don't even have to create it to sell it. You just sell the idea. You deliver it live. You record it. Now you have your course created. And then you just add people to the course, right? You can just keep selling it and selling it and selling it. It's zero cost to you to make an extra copy of the course. So it's super high profit margin. You can sell it with very, very little of your time. So it's very not time intensive. It is a little bit capital intensive because you probably have to pay for ads and pay for software in order to get clients, but you can make back that cost really, really fast. And pretty soon you're putting in $100 and you're pulling out $500. And it's just like, a, like an ATM machine where you put in, 100 bucks on ads, you pull out 500 bucks. Or in, depending on how good your course is, how good your marketing is, depends on what the multiple is, right? So you could make 10 times. You could put in 100 bucks and take out 1,000 bucks. And now you have 1,000 bucks. You put in that 1,000 bucks and you take out 10,000 bucks, right? It's, this is a really, really nice business model. It requires very little of your time. You can do it fully remote. And for this, you got an eight or nine figure income potential. Like it's huge which again is why everybody's doing it, like why everybody's going to this. And so, you know, because everybody's doing it, you do want to find a, a specific niche, right? You want to find a way to uh, present yourself in a way that other people aren't. And of course, that's what I teach my students to do. That's the biggest thing. But once you get this set up and running, man, it is amazing. So if you want to sell online courses, then the first thing that you have to do is figure out what to teach. And chances are, you, with your years of life experience, have figured out something that you could teach that is worth people paying for, right? You can think of when your life was not as good in some way as it is today. Well, what is it that you learned in order to get yourself from the point that you were then to the point that you are now? Chances are there are people out there that are in the point that you were in before that would love to learn what it is that you have, that you've figured out that's made your life 
better in some way, whether that's you're making more money, you have a better relationship, you got married, you have better health, you have, you know, lost weight, you know, whatever it is, there's a million different things that made your life better and that other people would love to learn as well. So if you want to check that out, if you want to get an idea of what it is that you specifically could teach that you could turn into a highly profitable online course business, then check out this video next where I'm going to show you exactly how to figure that out. That's it for now. See you in the next video.